It's your girl, Evis Love, and I'm here at DigiWax offices with Rod Digger. Yeah. And it's Spreading. been 10 years since you dropped your debut album. Mm -hmm. What have you been doing? And what, actually, six years. You were supposed to drop an album on J Records in 2004. Mm -hmm. Never came out. Why wasn't that record ever released? Well, the reason why Everything is a Story didn't come out was because at that time we were kind of going through some changes with uh, J Records. And Busta was secretly uh, planning to move to Aftermath, but we were trying to keep it hush-hush until my album dropped, but they caught wind of it and they just gave us all the boot. Okay. Now you talked about Busta and Flip Mode. Right after the Touch It remix, that's the last thing we really heard you on, the Touch It remix. And right after that, you left Busta and Flip Mode. Mm -hmm. Was there beef there? or What, what was your reasoning for leaving? Well, my reasoning for leaving, it, it wasn't beef, it was definitely an amicable split. We just, you know, well basically I just came to the conclusion that I, I was just tired of how things were going. We left J Records in 2004 and then we were heavy on the mixtape circuit for the next couple of years, but I just felt stagnant. Like I was, you know, I was getting bored of like just doing the same old thing, you know, doing the doing the mixtape stuff for a buzz and not really going anywhere and not really knowing what the next uh, uh, label situation was going to be. So I just decided to, you know, chill out, look into some other things. And I went to California. I lived out there for a number of years and um, just got my hands really into the behind the scenes side of things. I, I, I attended the New York Film Academy. Okay. So I'm a certified film editor, so you can look out for my uh, editing credits and my directorial debut in the near future. But um, yeah, I just, you know, I just dove in behind the scenes and and bought some property out in Pennsylvania. Just just really took some time to just reflect. You know, my, my daughter was coming of age and I felt like it was important for me to be around her at that time because just, you know, I missed a lot of her, you know, her toddler years being on the road and, and being all active because I, I had my baby like right as I became Rod Digger so I did a lot of traveling and stuff while she was growing up so I felt that it was important to you know just be there take some time and, and deal with motherhood and you know. Let's talk about the new project. You got a new project yes. getting ready to drop. Yes ma'am. Called Classics. Mm -hmm. Why did you call it Classics? I called it Classic because and in one word, that's just what it is. It is like authentic, pure, booming in your Jeep, you know, 808, like shout out to Knotts, he produced the whole project. And for me, it was, it, it's really, like I went into the project in the mind frame of making like, you know, a Dirty Harriet 2. But it that to me, it actually surpasses Dirty Harry. Okay. It's 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 definitely one of those albums that it's not a trendy album. Like whatever's going on in rap right now, I'm doing the complete opposite of it. There's there's no cameos, there's no features, it's one producer, um, there's no singing on the hooks. I mean, when I say it's a classic hip hop album, I mean beats, rhymes, boom bap. Okay. Now it said that all of them that saying the first single is Who Gonna Check Me Boo? Wrong. No it's more. Wrong? Yep. That's not. That originally that was gonna be the first single. When when I was in the early stages of recording, that was going to be the first single. That was gonna be my statement record. But now that the album is complete and, and finished, the first single is entitled This Ain't No Little Kid Rap. This ain't no little kid rap. This ain't okay. no little kid rap. That's the first single off the album classic. And that will actually be, uh, you'll be hearing that, I'm going to say, within the next couple of weeks. Um, I just shot the little trailer teaser for the video. Okay. Video's already done, complete, edited by yours truly. All right. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Like a one-woman band, right? Yeah. You got the whole thing. Yo, can I, can I tell you, <laughs> if I knew half the things now that... If I knew half the things back then that I know now, because I know how to Pro Tools myself, I can direct myself, I can edit myself, uh, you know. Renaissance. Like, like if, if, if I could do all of that stuff back then, then I would so much, you know, so much record budget money. And remember the days of spending like a million dollars in studios and recording costs and all that nonsense. And it, it just, no more. Them days, 
This is a wrap. I'm being a vet in the game before we get out of here. Any advice that you would give to some MCs that are coming up in the game, especially with with everything being so changed, you've seen it change. Like you've seen mm -hmm. it where people actually went to the store and bought CDs, and now to the point where you have to like beg people not to download it mm -hmm. early. So, what advice would you give to people that's just getting in the game right now with all the digital stuff that's going on? Well, um, most importantly, I think because because the music industry is so uh, digital digitalized digitized and um, internet based now i think most important is new artists like you gotta attack those blogs i mean there's so many it's so you guys got it so much easier than we had i can tell you when when i was promoting dirty harriet i had to literally get on a damn caravan and go from state to state <laughs> and get on everybody's radio station to let them know that i had an album coming out now they got email addresses you could just submit some you, you know you can really get stuff out there on a mass global scale just sitting at home you know just uh from hit and send which is uh <laughs> which is all part of the premise of my next single but i ain't going to disclose too much detail <laughs> but um i think you know with the internet being such a you know a music friendly tool i think you gotta attack those blogs you know get those submissions in. just basically get your internet presence up and and uh, the rest you know, the rest will just catapult for you. Believe me, a lot of those executives and, you know, people think that, oh, I got to go do these showcases and things like that to blow up. But people don't realize a, a lot of those record execs and A&Rs, like, they're on the blogs looking for the next hottest mm -hmm. things. Like, that's where you go now to find, you know, to find uh, those raw talents and things like that. So definitely get your internet presence up and, you know, don't be scared to put things out, whether it be YouTube or just just utilize all of those uh, internet uh, entities for you because they they definitely are a a plus for you. And the more internet presence you have, the more you know, the more leverage you have when when you're going to negotiate a deal. Like you could really sit up in some record label, like you had ten albums out just by releasing a a, a bunch of stuff on the internet. All right, it's your girl, I'm just love getting out of here with Roger. Is there yeah. a date for the for the um album? Right now, I'm looking at early August. Early August, so make yes. sure y'all cop that when it drops. All right.